So if we just take this tangent of dark energy, people will sometimes bring, bring up dark energy and dark matter as an example why physicists have lost it, <laughs> lost their mind. We're just going to say that there's this field that permeates everything, it's unlike any other field and it's invisible. Uh, and it uh, helps us work out some of the math. Uh, how do you respond to that? <laughs> Those kinds of suggestions. Well, two ways. One way is those people would have had to say the same thing when we discovered the planet Neptune. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's exactly analogous, where we have a very good theory, in that case, Newtonian gravity in the solar system. We made predictions. The predictions were slightly off for the motion of the outer planets. You found that you could explain that motion by positing something very simple, one more planet in a very, very particular place. And you went and looked for it, and there it was, right? It's That was the first successful example of finding dark matter in the universe. <laughs> so matter that we can't Neptune see. Neptune was dark. Yeah. There's a difference between dark matter and dark energy, right? Dark matter, as far as we are hypothesizing it, um, is a particle of some sort. It's just a particle that interacts with us very weakly. So we know how much of it there is. We know more or less where it is. We know some of its properties. We don't know specifically what it is. But it, you know, it's, it's not anything fundamentally mysterious. It's a particle. Dark energy is a different story. So dark energy is indeed uniformly spread throughout space and has this very weird property that it doesn't seem to evolve as far as we can tell. It's the same amount of energy in every cubic centimeter of space from moment to moment in time. That's why far and away the leading candidate for dark energy is Einstein's cosmological constant. The cosmological constant is strictly constant, 100% constant. The data say it had better be 98% constant or better. So 100% constant works, right? And it's also very robust. It's just there. It's not doing anything. It doesn't interact with any other particles. It makes perfect sense. Probably the dark energy is the cosmological constant. The dark matter, super important to emphasize here, you know, it was hypothesized at first in the 70s and 80s, mostly to explain the rotation of galaxies. Today, the evidence for dark matter is both much better than it was in the 1980s and from different sources. It is mostly from observations of the cosmic background radiation or of large-scale structure. So we have multiple independent lines of evidence, also gravitational lensing and things like that, many, many pieces of evidence that say that dark matter is there, um, and, and also that say that the effects of dark matter are different than if we modified gravity. So that, so that was my first answer to your question is, dark matter, we have a lot of evidence for. But the other one is, of course, we would love it if it weren't dark matter. <laughs> Our vested interest is 100% aligned with it being something more cool and interesting than dark matter because dark matter is just a particle. That's the most boring thing in the world. And it's uh, non-uniformly distributed through space, dark matter? Absolutely, yeah. And so this You can even see maps of it that we've constructed from gravitational lensing. So verifiable sort of clumps yep. of dark matter in the galaxy that explain stuff. Bigger than the galaxy, sadly. Like we think that in the galaxy, dark matter is lumpy, but it's it's just, it's weaker. Its effects are weaker. But over the scale of large scale structure and clusters of galaxies and things like that, yes, we can show you where the dark matter is. Could there be a super cool explanation for dark matter that would be interesting as opposed to just another particle that, that sits there in clumps? The super cool explanation would be modifying gravity rather than inventing a new particle. Oh. Sadly, that doesn't really work. We've tried, I've tried. Uh, that's my third paper that was very successful. I tried to unify dark matter and dark energy together. That was my idea, that was my aspiration, not even idea. I tried to do it, it failed even before we wrote the paper. I realized <laughs> that my idea did not help. It helps, it could possibly explain away the dark energy, but it would not explain away the dark matter. And so I thought it was not that interesting actually. And then two different collaborators of mine said, has anyone thought of this idea? Like they had thought of exactly the same idea completely independently of me. And I said, well, if three different people found the same idea, maybe it is interesting. And so we wrote the paper <laughs> and yeah, it was very interesting. People are very interested. Can in you it. describe this, this paper a little bit? Like it's just, 
It's, it's fascinating how much of a thing there is, dark energy and dark matter, and mm -hmm. we don't quite understand it. So what, what was your dive into the exploring how to unify the two? So here is what we know about dark matter and dark energy. Um, they become important in regimes where gravity is very, very, very weak. That's kind of the opposite from what you would expect if you actually were modifying gravity. Like there's a rule of thumb in quantum field theory, et cetera, that new effects show up when the effects are strong, right? We, uh, we understand weak fields, we don't understand strong fields. But okay, maybe this is different, right? So what do I mean by when gravity is weak? The dark energy shows up late in the history of the universe. Early in the history of the universe, the dark energy is irrelevant. But remember, the density of dark energy stays constant the density of matter and radiation go down. So at early times, the dark energy was completely irrelevant compared to matter and radiation. At late times, it becomes important. That's also when the universe is dilute and gravity is relatively weak. Now think about galaxies, okay? A galaxy is more dense in the middle, less dense on the outside. And there is a phenomenological fact about galaxies that in the interior of galaxies, you don't need dark matter. That's not so surprising because the density of stars and gas is very high there and the dark matter is just subdominant. But then there's generally a, uh, a radius inside of which you don't need dark matter to fit the data, outside of which you do need dark matter to fit the data. So that's again, when gravity is weak, right? So I asked myself, um, of course we know in field theory, new effects should show up when fields are strong, not weak, but let's throw that out of the window. Can I write down a theory where gravity alters when it is weak? And we've already said what gravity is. What is gravity? It's the curvature of space-time. So there are mathematical quantities that measure the curvature of space-time. And generally, you would say, like, I have an understanding. Einstein's equation, which I explained to the readers in the book, um, relates the curvature of space-time to matter and energy. The more matter and energy, the more curvature. So I'm saying, what if you add a new term in there that says the less matter and energy, the more curvature? No reason to do that, mm -hmm. except to fit the data, right? So I tried to unify the need for dark matter and the need for dark energy. That would be really cool if that was the case. Like, Super cool, right? It'd be the best. It'd be great. But it, it'd it be didn't work. <laughs> but it'd be really interesting if gravity did something funky when, uh, when, when there's not much of it. Like they almost like at the edges of it, it gets yeah. like noisy. That was exactly the hope, right? <laughs> but oh, the great thing about physics is there are equations, right? I mean, you can come up with the words and you can wave your hands, but then you got to write down the equations, and I did. And I figured out that it could help with the dark energy, the acceleration of the universe. It doesn't help with dark matter at all. Yeah. It just sucks that the scale of galaxies and scale of solar systems uh the physics is kind of boring yeah it does i agree <laughs> and again that's why it is a little bit i tear my hair out when people who are not physicists think you know accuse physicists like you say of sort of losing the plot because they need dark matter and dark energy i don't want dark matter and dark energy i want something much cooler than that i've tried but you got to listen to the equations and to the data